Okay, hello, hello, and welcome to the Rock and Roll Podcast. I'm your host, John Harris, and on my right-hand side is my right-hand man, Gabriel. Down over here is Avila. This is my beautiful uh, team here at the Rock and Roll Podcast. And today we have Symphony of Sweden. Speaking of good-looking people, uh, they have a new album called Inner Demons, as well as a new A-side, B-side single called The Grim Reaper. Right now I'm being joined by Lee to share some more information about what the band has got going on. I just recently learned some Swedish slang, so I'm excited to try it out. Lee, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. All right, the first one is Cha. Yeah. (laughs) Do you know what it means? Like, hello or like, hey? Yeah. yeah. What's up? What's up? Okay. What's up? What's yeah. up? And then this one I found kind of funny because it's an animal over here, but bison. I'm not familiar with that slang in Swedish, no. Oh, I heard bison means shit. No. No? Okay. Then that guy was wrong. <laughs> he lied nope. to me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Nope. Okay. All right. Uh, it's it's kind of sim- similar. I think you're referring to the word bice. Oh. Yeah, they kind of similar. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That explains that because I said something and they were they laughed and I was like, well, it's an animal and they're like, well, it means shit in Swedish and I'm like, really? The word bison means shit in Swedish? Yeah, they kind of similar. Yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The Grim Reaper of insults. So, uh, yeah, I'm gonna need an explicit this. <laughs> so, I guess maybe the first question I have for you, Lee, is we have an album and then we have a new, like, A side, B side. So, is this kind of like an EP? Like, you guys released an album and had some extra tracks? Uh, no, uh, we had a lot of tracks from the beginning because we have only been working together for uh, a year and a half. Mm-hmm. Uh, he found me it i owned a store in uh here in sweden and uh he came in one day and he heard that i like music and we started talking and uh he asked have you done anything and i was like yeah i i have done some stuff in my own private little portable studio and and he was like, yeah, I'm going to check that out. And uh, it didn't, one hour went, and he called me and he said, you and I should work together. And, uh, yeah, from that on, it went. Wow. Yeah. So, so we started um, writing songs. Uh, he said, come to my studio, I can produce you, he said. Uh, so come with your music. And I was like, yeah, but I heard he was like a really good, what should I say, really good composer music-wise. He's also a former pop star in Sweden, believe it or not. Mm. Yeah, uh, but he always wanted to do a little bit harder music. But he, his own words is, I don't have the voice for that. And he had said many times to me that he hates me because I have the voice he wanted to have. Aww. So, <laughs> yeah, that's nice of him. But, so I went on YouTube and checked on some uh, instrumental mu- uh, videos he had done. And I write a uh, lyric and melody to one of the songs. Uh, and he was, yeah, the first time we met, I had write Scream Out for Something. That was the first song we write. And uh, that kind of on the radio and everything. So, the first song. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. that does that seem sudden to you? Like one day you're just you know working in a shop as a as a mere peasant, and then the next minute yeah, you're. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I had no idea who he was when he was when he came into the store. I mean, just a regular guy looked really good for his age, believe it or not. <laughs> but he told me come to my house, and I said, yeah, I can check it out. And then I saw his house and huh, his studio. And I understand, uh, yeah, he is the he's the real thing. I mean, that's that sounds kind of creepy when you say it out loud. You know, like this guy came yeah. into my store and said, "Come to my house. I have a studio." That's yeah, how a lot of serial killers and rapists operate. Yeah, <laughs> when you think about it now, yeah, when you say it like that, absolutely, absolutely. Maybe that but doesn't you know, happen in Sweden. Maybe you guys are just you know so happy that nobody. 
Do you guys have killers and murderers and rapists in Sweden? Like, is that a thing? Yes. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. Sadly so. A, a lot more recent years. But I, I just want to say, when you say like that, we're happy and everything. Dude, you're from Canada. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, every movie, the American moon I, I have seen, but nothing happens in Canada. Everyone is so nice in Canada. And I really want to come to Canada because that's what I like to hear. Thank you. Nice yeah. people. Yeah, nice people. I have been told by Swedes who have made it across that we are the Sweden of North America. Yeah, I, I, I really think you can be. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because when a lot of people, especially here in Hudiksvall, if I talk to about my little town here in Hudiksvall, a lot of people uh, that are moving to Hudiksvall from a bigger city like Stockholm or something, yeah. everyone is like, Wow, you're really polite here in Hudiksvall. It's like, are we? <laughs> but, yeah, you are. You you always say hi when you meet somebody. You know, it's, yeah, that's common sense. I mean, but yeah. not for everyone. So, no, small town life, baby. Yeah, exactly. Dreaming of the big life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but we got pine trees. We got moose. What else do we have? We we got moose. How do you say moose in Sweden? Eli. 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 Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But I've seen, I have seen your mooses. They are way bigger than ours. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, you have, so you're living the dream, got plucked out of the air by a Swedish pop star, got to see what life is like when you are, I don't know, a modern day ABBA or something. Um <laughs> We wish, we wish. Someday, maybe. <laughs> uh, hey, little lady. Hopefully, uh, thank you for your patience. Um, no problem at all, dude, no. Yeah. Now, Inner Demons and, yeah. the, and the Grim Reaper and Bailey, are there lyrical ideas that tie it all together? Like, is there, maybe just even from the album perspective, is the album a concept album at all? Uh, if we say Bailey and the Grim Reaper are going to be on the next album, Oh, oh! Yeah, so yeah, we're work, we're working already on the next album because of Corona and everything. We didn't get the opportunity to go, to go on tour, right? And we was like, yeah, but we have we both Evan and I have so much music in us. It was like, yeah, we okay, we do another album instead. Yeah. So that's what we did instead of sit hope and mope. <laughs> that's right. If you ever need yes. you know Avila to do any backing vocals, just let me know. Oh, really? Yeah, we'll send the tracks. She'll be the next uh, can- oh, Canadian okay. Swedish pop star. Yeah. Yep, she's a great singer. <laughs> awesome, awesome. She's a great singer. She sure is, baby. Uh, cool, so then are you guys doing everything in the pop star studio? Or how is, how is the whole thing working? And um, you mentioned you've done some stuff before. Because of the pandemic, do you feel like you're working differently than you would have before? No. Uh, we have our thing. It's like, um, like from the beginning. Uh, what should I say? I always have melodies in my head. There's never a quiet moment in my head. And sometimes a gift, sometimes a curse, because sometimes you just please let it be quiet. But so our work progress is. Evan comes with either a musical part or an idea. And he records that, and he gives me a ground, and I start trying to get a feeling from the song and where it's gonna take me. And after the melody comes, I start figuring out some lyrics, and then I come back with Evan, and we record that together, and then he starts producing everything together. What's it like? working with somebody of that caliber is it intimidating was it intimidating in the beginning yeah oh yeah oh my god uh from the beginning like the first time i got to his house and i saw his big house and his amazing studio because i was extremely proud of my little studio because i have worked my ass off to get the money to buy these things and i mean (laughs) my studio cost like one of his keyboards (laughs) <laughs> when I came there. because he collects vintage keyboards 
So uh, we had an uh, other interview with uh, another pod- uh, podcast, and he was like, "Evan, you have to show us the wall behind you because it's keyboards from um, roof to the f- ceiling everywhere." Mm-hmm. Yeah, so um, that's why a lot of yeah, if you listen to scream out for something, you hear a lot of Evan's core thing. That it's a lot of keyboard sounds. Mm-hmm. So yeah, making uh, pop music edgier, I guess. I mean, you guys, I think, take it further than just pop music with edge. Like it, it's yeah, exactly uh, the first song. Like, like I said, "Scream Out for Something." That became a very poppy song. But both Evan and I are more into the heavy kind. But we do it the twist. That's why the name Symphony of Sweden, because we do have heavy guitars, we do have heavy drums, and but we twist it with a lot of orchestra, symphony orchestra, and a lot of melodies, because, like I said before, I love melodies and singing. So my thing is trying to get a pure melody that you can hum to, but still hear a very angry guitar, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Who is doing the angry guitar and the angry drums, and how do you guys go about doing that? Uh, I mean, from the beginning, if you listen to Inner Demons, uh, we have two songs, uh, three songs, with a lot of guitar. It's um, Under Fire, that was a riff I came up with uh, way before I met Evan. And then uh, Inner Demons, uh, the song Inner Demon, that is also the name of the album, uh, I play a solo there, and also in the song uh, A Soldier at Heart, I also play a solo in that. But for the next album now, we have a new guy uh, who helps us, because I have to focus on the singing, because if you listen to our songs... I have to concentrate on the singing. Mm-hmm. So we have a guy named Jim who's doing amazing guitar work, and he is when we're going on tour, he's gonna come with us. And on drums, we're having a guy called Eric, also amazing drummer, both extremely good musicians that work full time as musicians. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and uh, good they're strong, coming with us. good strong Swedish name, yeah. Eric. Yeah, but believe it or not, he's from he's from Germany. <laughs> ah. Yeah. <laughs> stupid iPhone. Stupid, stupid what? Stupid iPhone interrupting the interview. Did the iPhone interrupt my interview? What happened? <laughs> no, his iPhone. My iPhone? Whose iPhone? This iPhone? No. Oh, there's his. a there's a heat warning in effect. We've been going through. A lot of heat warnings. Uh, heat warnings. It's either like 11 degrees Celsius or it's 40 degrees Celsius. It's been one of those summers where it's just... And uh, I haven't cut the grass in two months. So I'm actually kind of happy about that. But it's it's dead now. Okay. You don't have any fires or anything, right? Oh, we got lots of fires. The, the, oh, okay. The, fo- the forests are very much on fire. And today's okay. But for the last month, it's been really quite smoky and hazy. Um because of the forest being on fire. Does that happen in Sweden? Yeah, a couple of years ago. I don't remember, two or three years ago, but our government uh, prioritized other things. So we owe a lot of thanks to Poland came and helped with us, came and helped us for free. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. Is that where you got the sword from the Poles? Uh, not really. I... Uh, I, I I didn't expect you to see the sword. Wow, damn, you really look. Okay, yeah, but I like uh, old things, like uh, old art, old weapons, stuff like that. Uh, I have said one day I'm going to own South Castle. One day. Yeah, but um, we'll see how old I am then. (laughs) Keep working with the fire child. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna try. <laughs> I was I was looking that up because I wanted to see if you guys were on a label as I was you know, to introduce you guys, and it said yeah. Firechild AB. So I was like, okay, I look it up on the internet, and no record label comes up. It's just a Swedish pop star. So I was legitimately confused. But then I think I'm starting. Exactly. I think I'm starting to get it. Oh, yeah, that, daughter. That's Evan. Uh, uh, he has. Um, 
he gets uh, one of his jobs is he tests out keyboards for companies. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you can search uh, Mr. Firechild on YouTube and you see his videos. That was one of the videos I found and wrote the song Three Months for Something. Oh. Okay. Yeah. So uh, he knows what he does. But yeah, we have talked about it. Should we go on a record deal? But yeah, maybe if we get the right deal. We have had some offers, but that's worthy. Not worthy. Okay. Yeah. If, you, if you don't mind, because obviously yeah. doing what I do, I know record labels um yeah. maybe it's private information maybe it's not especially since we're still recording but what is it that you're looking for in a record label uh we are looking for someone who can handle where to take us to the next step mm -hmm. uh someone who makes sure we are visible and uh that we don't have to think about uh, paying commercial and everything like that. Because it's, in Sweden, it's a lot of money for pay, to get yourself seen and the band seen. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need a good record label that can help us to the next step, who understand how we work and, yeah, want to share our vision for the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Just running my head immediately through, there's a couple that came to mind. Uh, typically, they would invest X amount. I'm sure you could work that yeah. out. Um, but I've seen some initial offers of like, hey, your guys are great. And never heard of you, though. But you guys are great. We'll invest in you 50. You invest the other 50. I'm yeah, sure we've heard. Yeah. Okay. And that's, yeah. is that something you're interested in or no? No. No, we have a, a quite a lot of offers like that in Sweden, and <laughs> not to get too personal, but uh, we had a meeting <laughs> with one very big <laughs> record company, and uh, they asked me if uh, I was interested in <laughs> be in a what should I say? What is it called uh, in Sweden? It's called the Docu Sopa. Uh, that doesn't sound very nice. It's no, it's called, uh, what is like, do you know what Paradise Hotel is? Yeah. Yeah. What, what is that type of show called in Canada or America? It's uh, a melodrama, maybe? Is that yeah, that? reality show. Yeah, or, reality show. Or, or reality TV show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I always asked if I was, um, if I could see myself be in that because it would be easier for them to promote us then. And I was like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I don't know about that one. One of the labels I had in mind would just blast you around the universe on Warner, Sony, and Orchard, um, work with you as far as growth is concerned, fill in the gaps where you guys need gaps filled in. Um, but, they're yeah. a, but they're a smaller label, so they wouldn't be doing like 100% investment, to my knowledge, unless you were able to work that out with them kind of thing yeah i don't know how common that really is anymore anyway i know a lot of bands are looking for that but i i don't know how common yeah. that is me neither actually yeah uh i guess no uh every the business part is evan's thing because he 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 knows that way better than me i would imagine way yeah he's been there you know he has done everything mm -hmm. uh, yeah so well, I, no, I, Evan is much more than just a bandmate. He's a producer and he's a coach. He's a guy. He's a awesome dude. He knows exactly what he's talking about. But yeah. if you ask him, he, he's way too humble to acknowledge that. So of course, yeah, of course, yeah. Uh, that's one of the things I want to make sure people understand. You know, when they're talking about my accomplishments in life, that they mention how humble I was when I was on the earth. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you, you look like sound very Canadian again, you dude. <laughs> Sweet. Uh, yeah. Cool. What I'll do is, um, if it's okay, I'll I'll fire off an email introducing you guys. If you work something out, great. If you don't, you know, whatever. Um, yeah, dude. Especially since you have an album coming up and you guys have a good professional sound, um, good strong work ethic. Uh, you look like a young uh, Speed, Bjorn Speed Strid. If you know who that is. 
soil work. Oh, oh yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah. I uh, met Bjorn a few times. You remind me of him. Uh, good vocals as well. I mean, I don't know if you can scream as much as he does, but... No, we're trying to find our own sound, but... Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right, so we chatted about small town Sweden, Swedish pop stars, Swedish yeah. or Polish swords, uh, antique yeah. items. We chatted about the album Inner Demons. We chatted about your oh. success story where you were plucked from the heavens. I want to add something to the chatter. Uh, we yeah. chatted about the Grim Reaper and Bailey. We chatted about a new album coming out. And hold on. Hold on. I want to add something. You want to add something. Okay. Well, I'll hold the Vila and then Gabriel can add something. Okay. Why, why, are you, <laughs> why are you typing? What's going on? What words mean in Sidig, <laughs> Swedish. That's right. Yeah, we were just watching something from a Swedish producer named Buster Odelholm, if you know who he is. No, not, okay. not quite, no. Uh, I'm trying to think of some, some bands I can name off the top of my head. Alt, which is a uh, Swedish band. Oceano and Born of Osiris. He worked with Born of Osiris. Who else did he work with? He worked with Humanity's Last Breath. Humanity's Last Breath. He's in his own band called Viljarta, which is a Swedish name, I think. Vil, Viljarta. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Viljarta? Yeah, Vil, Viljarta. Really? Okay. Uh, the lead vocalist there, Ville, I went to school with him. No way. The same class and everything. Wow. <laughs> okay, small world. Okay. It is. It is a small world. Uh, and then there's a big one. And I'm, what's the name of that band that you like? The uh, Cypher. Follow the Cypher. Yeah, okay, yeah. He worked with them as well on their first album, and then I don't know what's happened with them. They kind of teetered, they, they teetered they kinda off with the stopped. pandemic. Yeah. They just stopped their career. Hopefully they come back. Very cool stuff. But in the meantime, Symphony of Sweden's <laughs> taking their spot. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Baby. All right. Uh, is there anything I missed? Because all my questions are done. No, I, I don't think so. Okay. It's really nice to speet to you and meet your kids and everything. Oh, well, thank you. It's a good family affair. It was nice to see your um, vintage artwork and your sword. And, and uh, your beautiful face. Yeah, your beautiful face and the... the the quill on the wall that you write all of your lyrics with, and then you place it back on the wall. And then your handsomeness. <laughs> okay, your kid is good. He's good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Dude, I have I have one uh, request. If it's okay. Yeah. Uh, you have to stop me if I'm being rude here, but since. I got the privilege now to talk to a real blood Canadian. Uh huh. Can you just please say the word eh? Oh, eh? Yeah. Is in like. I just want to... Oh, you want like a like a hardcore hoser accent? Oh, I can give you a hardcore <laughs> hoser accent. Yeah. Oh, jeez, eh? So there I was, standing there going to the store, and you wouldn't believe what happened, eh? So I was there, and the guy looks at me, eh? And he says. Listen here, bud. You can't do that, okay? And I was like, "Don't you bud me, bud." Okay, thank you. You have made my year, dude. <laughs> good, good. I'm glad. Are there? Awesome. We call them hosers. Do you guys have an equivalent in Sweden? Like, is there like you can tell somebody's from the country or something? Yeah, extremely big. Uh, difference in cadence here in Sweden because uh, up high in Sweden they talk like real, like this you know, and when you come more down in Sweden they talk a little more, more like this oh, wow. bit, yeah <laughs> and then I'm not gonna even try in the bottom of Sweden because they're almost Danish so <laughs> you can't understand what they're saying mm -hmm. I was told I was told that if I Try to read Swedish, but with a German accent, I sound Danish. Oh. Let me see if I can find a Swedish sentence. Swedish. I'm just going to type in Swedish sentence. 
funny. Swedish yeah, yeah. Ex- examples. Let's see if I can. Okay, yeah. God morgen, god dag, god middag, god nat, hesen, taler du engelsak? Wer kann ja hitte negen zum taler engelsak? Jag til yeah. a bar a little svenska. I understand what he said. Yeah. I don't know how true it is, but that's what I was told. Somebody, I was trying to read something. And I was like, well, it looks like German, so I'll just do a German accent. And they were like, you sound like you're Danish. And I was like, hmm. You sounded like, uh, no offense, you sounded like every American trying to speak Swedish. <laughs> that's, that's perfect, that too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Groovy. Well, Lee, thank you so much for coming on to yeah. the show. Um, thank I'm you per- so much. You're welcome. Pretty sure we'll have you back on again since you've got an album coming out, so stay in touch. We'll please. Next time I have Evan with me. Perfect. Yeah. But dude, thank you. Evan. Cheers. Cheers. Bye.